What we have here is a 4,000 milliliter graduated cylinder. And yep, you can see that there. Uh, it's one of the biggest graduated cylinders I could find. And one as a chemist I use all the time for making buffer for mobile phase for HPLCs. That's high pressure liquid chromatography, chemistry talk. Anyway, this is quite useful. It's an accurate tool. And I've got a line across here at 3,000 milliliters. Uh, so what we'll do is fill this cylinder up with ice and then fill the water up to that mark. When the ice melts, let's see what happens. So we have our graduated cylinder here with our clearly marked 3000 milliliter line, our ice and our water. And I have a syringe just in case so we can fine tune putting a, a drop in there. A drop or two or taking a drop out so we can get the meniscus of the water right at 3000 milliliters. Now let's start putting some ice in our graduated cylinder. Should be an equilibrium between the, the water and the ice. So let's see. Let's see what happens when we put the water in here. So we want the most ice we can get in there. As that will displace most volume and it will make it most authentic. Like the Arctic regions that are just frozen all the way down. And then you see all this ice down and you just see the tip of the iceberg up here. So we want the meniscus to be at 3,000 milliliters. Tune this. Okay, let's see how we can just and I think we can do a time lapse on this. And that'll speed up the time for you, the viewer. Well, guys, did you see that? We just melted three liters worth of ice and water combined. It'd be like Antarctica or the Arctic ice going miles thick down. And look at what happened. I didn't see any appreciable increase or decrease in the water. I'm going to review that and see if I can see anything. But really, to tell you the truth, I can't see very much. Um, uh, I can pixel peep, as they say, and zoom real up into the time lapse and and see if there was any decrease or increase. Okay guys, I just reviewed five pictures from the time lapse, starting from the beginning to the end, so we can analyze the greatest difference of water volume over the maximum amount of time. Even with the imperfections of the experiment, like water drops on the side of the graduated cylinder, there still is a definite decrease in the water level. 
So the conclusion is ice is not as dense as water. And the accepted density measurement of ice is 0 0.92 grams per milliliter, and water is 1.00 grams per milliliter at 0 degrees Celsius. So this conclusion is fully logical. So if we assume any to all the ice in the ocean melts, then we should conclude the sea level will decrease. Isn't it interesting how there's such a difference between what we think is common sense and what is an actual fact? And the problem is we put all these assumptions into our thought process, and then we call our assumptions facts. In fact, that's not true. To build our worldviews, we have to have those assumptions, but our assumptions might not necessarily be right. So the whole point of science is to just see whether our assumptions are correct or not, and we can test them. So as you just saw with your own eyes, we know and you know that the ocean level will not increase when the ice melts. And the coastal cities are not going to be covered up whenever the ice melts, if the ice melts even. It could be cyclical and we end up going into an ice age in another hundred years. We don't know these things. We've only been tracking this by computers for about 60 or 70 years. We haven't even had computers before that time. And then the reliability of thermometers before that time is not necessarily certain because what were they calibrating to? See, there's a lot of things that we don't know about anything before, say, even the temperatures of 1950 with any accuracy. So here in just about 2020, we've got about 70 years of possibly accurate data. And as we can see, we can't really draw a lot of conclusions when we try to extrapolate that 70 years into a hundred years or a thousand years or 10,000 years from now in the future or in the past. Anyway, I think that's fabulous. It's fabulous to know a little bit and then you don't have to be thwarted by the sinister forces in the media that keep on telling us lie after lie after lie. The only thing we can know for certain is that we shouldn't trust those people that lie. Or another way to do it is we shouldn't trust those people who are incompetent and don't know what they're talking about. So that is why I don't believe the ocean levels are going to flood Louisiana or New York City or LA. I just think things are going to be all right and we will be able to adjust to the, to the circumstances that come our way. Well, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can always share it and comment and you can subscribe. It's always free to subscribe. Well, remember, in two days, tomorrow will be yesterday. So I recommend just getting to those things that you always wanted to do. You know, your wish list, your things to do. Solomon said, don't put off to tomorrow what you can do today. Very wise words by a guy that lived 3,000 years ago. So I hope the best for you, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great week.